In this show, we might have just found out why the GPU scores for the M1 Max aren't what we expected. I'm Mike Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumours every weekday at 12 UTC, like this video, subscribe to the channel and ring my bell and I'll tell you why you should ring it very soon. And yes, we have some information on those GPU scores. We will come to those in just a few minutes. We're going to go through some of the other kind of stuff that's caught my attention. First of all, and first and foremost, cheap Apple straps that you can get on eBay, Amazon, all those kinds of things. They're quite good if you want something for a little bit of a change, if you not need to dress up an outfit, for example. This Milanese loop that I have right here, this one is, uh, I think this was about £8, um, which compared to, is it 99 or 149 from Apple? It's an absolute steal. I physically cannot tell any difference between this and the regular one, and it's, it's I've had this for several years. Now, I got a sports strap, uh, which you might have seen in some of my videos, is this one. Um, this was the kind of rainbow ones. Now, the rainbow bits have kind of worn off. Um, the rubber is a little bit stickier than you get on the Apple silicon straps. But this happened yesterday, so the end of it actually tore off in my watch. Now, that was quite annoying. Um, but basically, the, the rubber has kind of degraded a little bit and, uh, yeah, torn off. But I've literally had this for five weeks, six weeks maybe, not very long at all. Um, and it does just go to show that there is a quality difference between the Apple ones that we get and the ones that are cheap from eBay. And obviously there is always gonna be a bit of a difference in quality when you are paying, you know, three pounds instead of 50. Do I think that they're a terrible thing to buy? No, I don't. I think there's no problems with having some alternative straps, but I think it's important that people understand that they are not exactly the same as what you get from Apple. Um, there is definitely a difference there. Just thought I'd mention it. Next up, the AirPods third generation. I got these uh, yesterday because that was when they were released and I think they are fantastic. Now, I did a little unboxing yesterday, a little formal review. Go and check that out. I will put the link up there. But yes, one thing that I did not expect was when I uh, popped these in this morning while I had a bit of YouTube on in the background, I just wanted to kind of get used to them, use them a little bit more. But the spatial audio, like the physical moving your head spatial audio stuff, works with the Mac even when I'm watching YouTube. And this might be something that my brain is making up for me. It seemed like the sound was actually coming from the corner of the screen where the video was. That, that kind of blew my mind a little bit. Now, I've never had spatial audio based on the accelerometers before. I've never had the AirPods Pro, I've never had the AirPods Max. Um, so this was a bit of a revelation for me. And that alone, I'm gonna say, makes it worth the upgrade from AirPods second generation, which is what I've had in the past. Um, I do think these are great, but that bit has blown my mind. I will do another review of these once I've used them a little bit more, but I just wanted to share that with you. Something else I just want to quickly address is I know that the lighting sucked balls in yesterday's video, so I'm really sorry about that. I have made some adjustments today. I've also uh, paid to have the log um, filming on Filmic Pro, which is like £12 as an upgrade. So I want to see if that's better. It just should give me a flatter profile that I can then play with a little bit more. But the other things that we've done is I've put a warmer filter on the light up there. Uh, the light up here is in white instead of that kind of bluey tone. And also my display, uh, this was a suggestion from Evan Rogers that the wallpaper on the big display that's right underneath this screen might have been messing with my colours. So I've now got like a kind of peachy wallpaper and nothing else on the screen while I'm doing this. So it should give me a nice flat light like a big old softbox. Uh, having a 40 inch screen in front of you might uh, make that a nicer look. So let me know how you think the colour looks in this video. Does it look better than yesterday? Now onto the Geekbench Metal scores. We found out why they are lower than expected and it's a fantastic reason. Basically it turns out that the M1 uh, Max chip is too fast for Geekbench. Mind blowing. Now it doesn't mean that it's the fastest uh, system on Geekbench. 
It just means that because of the throughput, it's able to do all of this stuff at the same time and get it all out. Um, but Geekbench uses short bursts of compute uh, processes, and it's not enough for the GPU on the M1 Max to actually ramp up to its peak frequencies. Basically, the M1 Max is just like looking at the task and shrugging and going, I don't actually need to make an effort here for what Geekbench is throwing at me. Baller. Right now we're getting somewhere around, I think it's 62,000 on the Geekbench score. Uh, I think the 24-core the chip is doing about what we would have expected, but the 32-core is getting about 62,000. We should be looking at high 70,000s, maybe into the 80,000s in terms of the score on this. This is why when it came out and people were saying basically, oh, it's not as good as the 3080 mobile that everyone thought that kind of Apple was comparing it to, Maybe it is, and maybe we just haven't been able to find a way to test it properly yet. However, Max Tech, Max Tech do some of the best uh, tests of these things in the world, and basically they've bought eight MacBook Pros of the new style, and they were comparing it to the best, I think it was the best integrated graphics you could get in a MacBook Pro uh, with Intel, which was the G7 integrated graphics, uh, versus the 14 GPU um, base binned MacBook Pro. So the best integrated graphics you could get on an Intel MacBook Pro uh, scored in the high 20s, I think it was 27 frames per second, the binned 14 inch MacBook Pro with the 14 GPUs and the six performance cores, the eight core chip, 147. Okay, okay. This is just, it's a new world that we're in now and that's, this is probably why Geekbench was struggling with that 32 core version of it. So I think we're we're pretty safe to say that the graphics on these things are pretty awesome. I know there's going to be a bunch more tests coming out over the coming days and I just I'm here for it. I can't wait to see what they can do. And I want to do something that we've not done for a really long time. So I said earlier you should subscribe to the channel and ring my bell. And uh, the reason for that is that we're bringing back Notification Squad for one episode only. So if you are one of the viewers who has subscribed to the channel and you've rung the bell, um, whether you do it today or whether you've done it already in the past, post up hashtag Notification Squad down in the comments section and you will get a shout out in the next show. That's the thing that we're going to do. I'm a little bit terrified because we are getting a lot of views now um, and we might have to do a whole episode of me just reading out your names. We will see what happens, but I want to be overwhelmed. Let's do it. Hashtag notification squad down in the comment section and let me know what you want to see more of from the channel on that comment as well. Really appreciate it. And on that subject as well, we are rapidly approaching 10,000 subscribers. We are going to celebrate it. We are going to do a live stream. We will also have a live stream tomorrow for the uh, Apple earnings call. That will be tomorrow evening. Um, so be around for that. Uh, I'll be posting the live stream later today, I think. So make sure you're ready ready to go for that one. Um, and let's get into a few of your iCave answers. If you've got a question to ask uh, that you want me to answer in a future video, hashtag iCave answers down in the comments section. First up, just a passerby asks iCave answers. So I'm saving up my lunch money for a Mac Mini M1 Pro with 10 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, 32 gigabytes of memory, and a one terabyte SSD. Just doing some percentage comparisons between the current M1 Mini and the M1 13 inch MacBook Pro with similar configurations and the price difference seems to be between 53 and 59%. So I'm guessing I could pick up my dream Mini if it ever comes out for between 1536 and 1710. What do you think? Am I close? So I hate to say it, but I don't think you are necessarily. So for these, my thought is that we're going to start at around about 1300 because yes, it's going to be cheaper than the uh, MacBook Pros because we're not putting in a screen, a keyboard, uh, a battery, all of which are kind of fixed costs. So I think what we need to do is actually look at the base cost of the unit uh, and then the additional costs. If we were starting at 1300, for example, which is higher than I would hope, but based on the difference between the previous Intel MacBook Pros that were still on the range and the and the new M1 Pro version, I think we're probably looking at um, 1300 as a starting point. That would be for the binned 14 core GPU, eight core CPU version. Um, with 512 and 16 gigs, so you're going to add on 200 to go up to the regular system with the 16 cores, then you're going to add on 200 for the RAM, for the unified memory, and probably 200 for the 
SSD upgrade. Um, that would be my best guess. Obviously, you're not scaling the cost of a display with this. So you get a starting point and then you add on to that. So, so I think $1,900 is probably about the money. I know it's a little bit more than you were expecting, but uh, I don't think we're too far off. And Randomness R asks, IK answers, hey, please have Apple release a 15 or 16 inch MacBook Air. Please, I want to get my siblings a gift of the new M2 MacBook Airs. Well, first of all, that's very, very generous of you. Uh, number two, Apple don't tend to come to me for advice on what to release, which is upsetting, I know, uh, and I would love to be an advisor for the guys over there in Cupertino, but I don't think they need me at this point. They seem to be doing a decent job of things right now. Um, so we're going to leave them to it. Uh, we're going to let them do what they're doing, let them do their thing. Uh, Tim Tim Cook is, is doing a, a pretty decent job. So I think we'll let them crack on for now. But yes, I would like to see that larger MacBook Air as well. I just don't see it happening. And that's it for today's show, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we have already filmed the studio tour. That's being edited today. Needs to go off to a couple of people for approvals because they sent me a very expensive desk and they want to make sure they get the money's worth. That makes sense. Um, but that will be coming out in the next few days. Um, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.